Greetings and hallucinations to all you people out there in FAF. I have a cast today of one of my games. Um, figured I might as well do one of myself. This is Pyramids, one of my favorite maps. This and Hilly Plateau, I love them. It is a 5 versus 5 version of the map. Extra ACU, a little bit extra mass, and I would think a little bit more fun as long as you can get your connections sorted out. Up here on the north team, we have myself, Zap Brannigan, Vivaldi, uh, Metal Forever, TGX Legend Lore, and Callus. Versus on the south team, we have Man of Action, Eximus, Morax, Shio, and the unpronounceable Siwaona Dafnuin, hereafter known as Sui. Um, the southern team plays a lot together, uh, Morax, Man of Action, and these are on voice chat, and then myself and Vivaldi are on voice chat on the North team. This is a pretty standard map, there's a little bit of spam. There's an opportunity or two to turtle if you so desire, and uh, generally I just find it to be a really interesting map. The play can unfold several different ways. I have an early bomber out for Sui trying to push that advantage of Seraphim. Their bombers are amazing. And everyone else is spreading out like you would normally see. Generally on this map, the rear player does play air. This is a uh, pretty standard team map. It appears that Shio has opted for the spam as well as Eximus laying down some land factories trying to pick up some adjacency for Shio. Um, my team on the other hand strictly pushing engineers from one factory a couple of tanks here and there for Vivaldi as UEF the tech option is a pretty smart one. Um, myself I am in the mid getting an upgrade and immediately pushing T2 on a factory. I love T2 UEF. Pillars are amazing. And I have to cancel that upgrade and back up because Aurora's <clears throat> the lovely Aurora outranging the UEF ACU can get quite annoying, but I do have the almighty pillar to back me up. Sui has decided that walking is not fast enough and is dropping on the center mass <clears throat> on the center mass here. And Callus is dropping as well on the rear to suck up this mass. <laughs> if you can steal mass at any opportunity, it is always a good idea. Callus dropping the other side as well. Usually on this map the air players will pick up the mechs on the sides here as they only have six mechs in the back. Actually, I misspoke, they have five mechs in the back. Pretty solid engagement here. I believe I had gun upgrade, yes, I have gun upgrade on my ACU. And a handful of pillars and a shield. Pretty formidable early game, I love the UEF gun. Uh, since it does have 200 damage per shot instead of twice as many shots, it's a one-hit kill on Aurora's and T1 artillery, so you can pretty much tick off your veteran see by the second. Pop, pop. Vivaldi in a little bit of a scrap here. He does not have enough units to back him up. Morax has joined Eximus on this side pushing some extra units that way. Vivaldi is going to be going to have to be careful if he doesn't want to get overrun by the dreaded Mantis Swarm. I am pushing off that direction to give him a hand with my shield and my flak. Leaving tanks in the center. 
The southern team has a pretty good stranglehold on air, which is a good thing. Uh, it's allowing Eximus to push a couple extra bombers and harass this northern expansion. TGX also has the gun upgrade and he is coming in to try and secure this center point. Up here, I've cut off Eximus's supply of units and Vivaldi is chasing down his ACU. I believe this potentially will be a kill. Knock one player out early. Eximus has taken the center. Some extra units from metal. But, the Rhinos are coming. <laughs> and here comes the Turtle War in the center. And I always dislike turtles, and you'll see why as this game progresses. There goes the ACU killed by Vivaldi and his T2 tanks. Turtles on a map like this generally are a waste of mass. Um, point defense can't move. Units can. I think the advantages are pretty obvious. EGX not quite having enough units to totally deny all these rhinos. Falling back some but uh, Metal Forever is pushing ahead. Another unit I love from UEF, the Sparky. It is close to mass equivalent to a tank. Um, it does have good damage. And it's an engineer. It can reclaim everything. It can build point defense. It also has jamming. There is nothing the Sparky can't do. T2 bombers and gunships coming up from the southern team. Going straight for Vivaldi's comm. He is going to try to dodge, but immediately dipping down into the yellow. I sent a shield to try and help protect him a little bit, and this flak that I brought with me earlier is being an absolute hero, picking up a veterancy and knocking down several gunships and a T2 bomber or two. Looks like Vivaldi will make it. Metal Forever is pushing tech pretty hard. He already has a T3 Max, and the uh, both sides have got T3 Air, although Callus is a bit behind on that. He had two ASF and a couple of Swift Winds, and Man of Action is already pushing a significant group of ASF. That is going to be a major plus for the Southern team. <laughs> Strap bombers out exactly as I thought they would be for the south. When you have air control, why not? Although, Palace now has a pretty good amount of ASF, but may not be as easy. Vivaldi trying to jump into his shields, the strap bombers falling, and that attempt has failed. TGX and Vivaldi have both secured their expansions. Got a lonely little anti-air. I don't know what he's hoping to do. Running around in frustration, tearing his hair out as this engineer is slowly taking over his homeland. <laughs> uh... Harbies out for Shio. Harbingers at this point are a very good option. They are on the weaker side of the T3 bots, but they are fast and they are brutally efficient at killing T1 and T2 spam as you are seeing here. My rhinos stood no chance of doing damage. And this is going to be a problem have a lot of spam coming in and not much protection. Uh, T2 bombers are making quick work of it though. 
rhinos trying to catch up. I do love rhinos. They are an awesome looking tank, but unfortunately they sit so low to the ground that they always hit terrain when they're trying to shoot things. Quite an annoyance. It's one reason I like the rhino better. Now this could get hairy. We have about four harbingers, a whole lot of obsidians, and a T3 already coming up. And I do not have a whole lot of backup here. I'm trying to get some shields and tanks to my position and overcharging the harbies. That is going to work out pretty well. Just so many obsidians though. This is the deal breaker though. Picking up veterancy, trying to kill them all, and strap bomb. That is how I die in most games. <laughs> I always overextend my comp with not enough units to cover it. And most of the time when I die, that is how I die. I'm sure some of y'all saw the Guile cast um, of me dodging strap bombers for essentially the same reason, overextending my comp without enough support. And unfortunately, I was not able to have the benefit of micro because of all the obsidians. And here, TGX is also in somewhat of a scrap. He has no point defense, one Percival, and his ACU. And here come Loyalists and Rhinos. Morax has made the shift to T3 and is pushing a lot of Loyalists. Also, we are seeing Restorer spam from Man of Action. So this could get problematic already lost one player on the north side. Man of Action is doing a good job of reclaiming all of my stuff. Hopefully he can turn that into some mass. Turn that into a good project. PGX trying to build some shields, being unsuccessful, trying for T1 any air. He needs some flak from this T2 factory back here and he is building it, but I don't know if it will get here in time. Trying to build team with any air and the restores just knock it down as quickly as it comes. As Percival's in to back him up, this is a good thing to have next to you because they will deny the loyalists. Trying to run away, trying to get the flag. Here come the strap bombers. And one hit. And he is gone. That is two players from the North team. Working with the air dominance, the southern team has managed to knock out two of the front players on the northern team. Although, Callus has managed to push out a GC, and at the same time, Metal has furnished a chicken. So, let's see if they can deny this. There are an awful lot of loyalists, the primary enemy of the Galactic Colossus. Just have to see if it's enough. Strap bombers or stores. Metal Forever is doing the smart thing and pushing the mobile flag though, so that is a plus. Um, cool thing about Loyalists, they do have a death weapon that stuns units when they die. And that is the reason they're so effective versus a Galactic Colossus. If a Galactic Colossus starts sucking them up, it sucks a Loyalist into its Tractor Claw, kills it, and it stuns the Galactic Colossus. So, a swarm of Loyalists with perhaps a handful of bricks does a really good job of, uh, does a really good job of killing a Galactic. And the chicken being forced back by those Restorers as well. This is a problem. Vivaldi has built a whole lot of Titans and sent them south. The disadvantage being, while they're fast, Titans are very weak. Um, they're good at killing build power and good at harassment, but when you have to run through Harbingers and there's Restorers in the other base, they're just not going to make the cut. Man of Action is getting quite a few strap bombers built up. Um, they have scouted. There's a nuke 
on the way from Callus, nukes are lethal on this map because the bases are so close together. You can land a really good nuke and wipe out a good portion. Strat Bomber is going to try to make a run by and kill that. I don't think there's enough though because that does have a T3 shield over it. He's going to need a dozen or so Strat Bombers to break that. And I believe he only has seven if I am counting correctly. Callus has also opted for Restorers, ma'am. You do not ever want to go 100% Restorers because they are too slow to react to situations. But a group of restorers plus a handful of ASF does do a really good job. Um, Callus, or not Callus, Metal Forever has also jumped into the air game. So for the first time, it looks like the northern team is contesting air. They do have enough air to secure this. Percival's on the move for Vivaldi, but here come the Loyalists. There are a lot of Loyalists in this group. He has 47 Loyalists, plus some flak. <laughs> Loyalists are not quite as fast as the Titan, but they are extremely good units, and as I mentioned before, the Death Stun does them a whole lot of good if you just bull rush straight into the enemy forces. Here come the strats going for Vivaldi's calm, but he does have shields and there is ASF cover. Those are going to die pretty quickly. Both sides of the map, they're trying to push Sam's. Um, denying airspace. have a Caesar about halfway built, a little over half here, trying to rush nuke defense. But I don't think it will be enough. This nuke has already been building for quite a while. Um, Percival's, this was the mistake. Um, he should have just rushed straight in with the Loyalists instead of trying to kite because they're dying out here and the death weapon is doing them no good. Uh, Loyalists will beat Percy's mass for mass if you can get in and stun them, which Morax did not do. And this Strategic is about to get detected. hairy. We have a nuke, no anti-nuke, a GC and a chicken with probably 40 flak coming in. This could be the wrap-up for this game. Nuke is going to land on the air player. And poof! No more air. That entire base, except for two T3 max. That is going to be an extremely bad problem because now North is decidedly going to win air. The Caesar could have saved them, but it's just. Uh, a Caesar is too weak versus ASF. Caesar is up, given to the air player. There is a chance if he can knock down these T4, they could survive the fight another day. There's a whole lot of spam up here. They could make a recovery. Caesar diving in, taking all this flak. It does manage to knock down the GC with the help of an overcharge from Sui's Tom, but now there are restorers. Sad day. Chicken knocks out the nuke defense, goes after the Com. Restorers kill Sui. Chicken on Shio, and that is game. Another ACU goes up and T3 tanks chasing down Morax. Look for a while there like Southern Team was going to make a comeback when they knocked out two ACUs, but it just wasn't enough. Callus was able to eco out of it. Good game to all.